Hey, and welcome to the Landlord Tenant Show. I said tenor. Tenant Show. <laughs> and other stuff. <laughs> Anywho, it's with Miss Arendi and Miss Kita. So, today's topic is do people read? And that goes along with your contracts the agreements you sign with different applications, just in general. Cause I mean, I deal with that a lot when people get texts, they have read, you know, the group text they have read, then they call you to ask questions that's already in the text or the document. So, and let me piggyback for a second. We were supposed to go live today. <sighs> But due to unforeseen circumstances in the past couple of weeks, we've been having the time because we were supposed to go live last week. My baby got into a car accident, so I, I didn't have any transportation. So um, now, you know, I'm working that out, you know, as we speak. And um, additionally, the week before that, I was at a conference. So, you know, we excused that because I had already stated that we won't be back until the 16th or 17th. It was the 16th. But um, now today, we having all these technical difficult issues and whatnots and things and um, trying to work through that. And uh, yeah, when we figure that out, we'll be, we'll be live and I will let you know. So hopefully next week we'll be better equipped. Yeah, we'll be better equipped. I'm speaking that into existence. We'll be better equipped. Okay. So back to the topic. Do people read? So Arendi, when you're <clears throat> administering these contracts that these tenants sign, do you believe they read every line? No. That was a quick, no. I, I don't even think they I was don't. finished with my question. They just look <laughs> for their name. Where I signed that? <laughs> Where I signed that. That just goes to show you they don't read. And and honestly, a lot of them end up signing in my spot. <laughs> you're not the landlord, sir. You're not the landlord. <laughs> Are you serious? Why would you sign right here? Oh, oh. No. Say that's you, not what we asked for. You're too fast. You're not reading. You're not even reading the first page. And I hate the whole fake out. Uh -uh. Don't make it seem like to me you read me. Because huh? I know you're not reading. <laughs> I know you're not reading. You. <laughs> Babe, stop. You're not reading. You're initialing stuff that ain't supposed to be initial. You asking me what you're supposed to initial. It's your lease. <laughs> Isn't there a dash next to the item that they're supposed it's to initial? release? Uh, I had to get to the point where I'm like highlighting. Well, you know, that's what a lot of them do now. They highlight in order to make sure the person marks in the right spot. Dog. Matter of fact, it's online. They highlight every spot that mm -hmm. you're supposed to sign. Uh, sign. Yep, initial and sign. And I know that sounds crazy, but at the same time, again. People don't read. Exactly. They want to hurry up and just get to the bottom. Like, huh, okay, okay, where do I sign at? But you know what? When so I get my keys, when I get my keys. You like, why do you have a dog with you? Uh-uh. Why can't you have a dog? Did you not read your lease? Uh, no. <laughs> why is the people living in the basement? Why is your son in the basement? This is a shared unit. Uh-oh. Don't you think that's kind of creepy? Yeah. Don't you think that's kind of creepy? Yeah. If you stayed upstairs and you come downstairs to wash some clothes, somebody over there in the bed. In a corner. <laughs> watching TV. You like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Why are you here, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> go to your unit. Uh uh. Yeah. They don't have no unit to go to. That's why they in the basement. Go to your unit. Uh uh. Oh my gosh. That is sad. But I guess it's baffling to me that people don't take the time to really read. But it, to me, is a testament to the things that we are missing. So case in point, somebody made a statement saying that if we read everything, no, 
because we don't read everything like with the agreements and terms and agreements that you have with credit card companies, just anybody, you can put yourself in slavery and you wouldn't even know you it. Wouldn't even know it. If you do not pay this bill, we coming to pick you up. You like that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where I sign at? Or yeah, or you're subject to uh, incarceration. You yeah. didn't see that fine print. Because you didn't want to read it. That's just, I mean, that's just like anything. We don't take the time to read. Those commercials that they have in regards to when they're selling cars, they sell that. Oh, you can get it at 0% interest. If you notice at the bottom, it's that little itty bitty print that say it's subject to credit approval based on yeah, credit you rating. Yeah, get up there and they be like, oh, 975 a month. You're like, wow, I thought I was getting a car for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all said seventy six dollars on TV. <laughs> Y'all told me to come down here, <laughs> pick up my two thousand and twenty three, right? Seventy six dollars a month. Don't play with me, <laughs> ma'am. No. But your credit rating is a four eighty. <sighs> <laughs> How are you supposed to work that out? Mm. With a low payment. That's why y'all should give me the low payment because I can't. <laughs> you know what? You got a point. Yeah. <laughs> like, why y'all want to make me pay seven ninety six? dollars you, you know? You penalizing me for You penalizing me for having poor credit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because I need them low payments. I need them low payments. That's why I got poor credit. Y'all charging me too much. Oh, you my God. You can't gosh. pay everybody. Okay. No, you can't. Somebody getting out the hat. <coughs> so wait a minute, check this out. The school I be working at, the school I work at, there's um there's like these uh, reminds my principal sends out every Sunday. And it'll have instructions for everything, be it if your child is sick, keep them at home. If uh, you don't, you know, if you bring a lunch, you know, make sure it's not outside food, that it comes from home, that kind of thing. And I be John Brown. I have more parents that come in with McDonald's and whatever other food that they come with they're not supposed to have. Because lunch is free. And the thing about it is, if they don't have it, I mean, I get some kids on, like, the food for lunch, but goodness gracious. You should or, have made him a ham sandwich. And then it's like, I said, um, you know you're not supposed to bring outside foods. Oh, I didn't know that. I said, he sends that in the reminds every week. So, again, we're not reading. We get the text message and we don't read it. Oh, it's like, oh, okay, this is just general stuff. No, you need to read. You really need to read. There was a guy, um, and I forgot his name, but he's online and he went through the TikTok's user agreement. Yeah, that's him. And when I tell you, when he broke that thing down, when he broke it down in regards to how TikTok can actually go in your phone and know the devices that are you're using that are near your phone they can go and get anything that is in your phone any documents they can read those so it's just like wait a minute what so you can go in, inside all of my media files that has nothing to do with TikTok at all and get access to information i did not allow you to have that i didn't think you were supposed to have but because i'm using your app and i've made this agreement now it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they done went inside my app and got this between photos, documents, anything. Your license could be on there. Your social security number could be on Because, you know, we take pictures of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and I'll admit I'm guilty of doing the same thing. Just go ahead and sign it or whatever and not paying attention. And I think we're not reading the way we're supposed to. We're not being our own attorney. We're not being our own counsel in regards to the documents that we receive. And what ends up happening is that before you know it, someone can come after you and you don't even know why. Or somebody can steal your information, and, but really they're not stealing because you've already made an agreement that you didn't even know you made. Girl, it's like this homeschooling. Uh-oh. It is whooping me. Really? I mean, it's better as far as transportation go uh-huh but the communication is a tad bit overwhelming i think because i'm a property manager and i talk to people and get text messages and emails all day 
that the minute one of their teachers email me or text me, I'll be like, huh, you know, and I have to read it because it's important. Right. That's how they check in. Right. So the kids check in by text or email or call, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Joseph is 11. Okay. So I have to monitor him when he's sending a text to his teacher, you know, because she'll give him, like, three questions. And she want them to elaborate on it. You know, like, they can't do quick texts. Like, class was good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did English today. It was great. <laughs> You know. So what was great about that? <laughs> exactly. Like you got to give me th three reasons why it yeah, was great. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's that. And then it's like, what are you doing this weekend? You know, um, what's your favorite food? You know, and it's like, dude, as a parent, you just be like, so this every week. <laughs> and it's not just him it's Joshua too right and it's like and they'll, they'll call like oh hi Miss Hollis I want to talk to you so it's the teachers and the mentors they have mentors and teachers they send me okay. text messages and emails I be getting them confused like I just talked to you and it's like no I need to be Miss Roper I'm like Miss Roper <laughs> three's company yeah no, he got so. a Miss Roper girl <laughs> and he call her Miss Roper I'm like it's Roper <laughs> Stop calling this lady his Rupert. It's not two O's there. It's only one. Uh-uh. Miss Rupert. <laughs> okay, have a good night, Miss Rupert. I'm like. <laughs> uh -uh. But it's a lot of reading. They send me emails. Girl, I be like, this is crazy. The emails just be overwhelming really overwhelming but i have to read them so yeah. i get it you know <laughs> but you have to read yeah but you know what <clears throat> i think and me and my best friend had this conversation yesterday when you understand how you best learn a lot of times that helps in in regards to um how you move so case in point I, I best learn hearing it in my ears. So I'm more of an audio visual learner. Like I need to see it, I need to hear it, that kind of thing in order to make it attached to my brain. I don't mind reading, <laughs> but it's not, it's not my first choice. That don't means I don't like to read, it's just the fact that sometimes for me, it's better for me to hear it and see it than it is for me to just read it. So, and she's kind of the same way. And I think when you start understanding how you learn i'm wondering if people take the time to really understand how they really kind of take in information because some people rather text than mm -hmm. they rather do email or they rather have a phone call <laughs> like the majority of the time i'm more of a face-to-face -face person so i'd rather see you in person than sit up there and be on the phone phone is not my main thing um, I'll talk to those that I know I don't talk to often on the phone. However, I would rather see you face to face if you're not out of state. <laughs> I would rather, I would rather look, go out somewhere and have a conversation than sit up there and be like, uh, but it's, it's how I take in information and I don't like having to sit there and, you know, be on the phone or, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't mind the text as long as it's quick. I don't want a whole conversation on no text either. So, you know. I think if you start to understand how you are as a person, how you take in information, you could probably deal with things a little bit better. And I think because some of us are not, you know, readers in a sense where we're avid readers. Like my son is an avid reader. He can read a 600 page book in a few days yeah, my son and comprehend it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can read a 600 page book in, in a few days too. You like, who was Bill? I and don't I'm, know. I'm like, I, here's the general <laughs> concept of the book. <laughs> What's Bill in there? Right. Like, here's oh, the general concept it. of the book. I remember that part. Like, no, he can he can actually comprehend every part of that book. And my brother is the same way. Like, he can read stuff and tell you the page number of information, where to find it. Oh, you can find it on this page. And I, you know, sometimes I wish I was that type of person. But I'm not. I know. And I'll admit, 
the you know when I was working on my masters oh my gosh reading 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 and you know you have to make sure you get the sources and I struggled there's a couple of classes I had to repeat because I struggled and I'll, I'll tell anybody you can get past it. it just takes a minute and because my life was busy and especially toward the end I was going through you know my divorce or whatever and my daughter's graduating it was just a lot going on I was able to finish so but I, I'll admit that whole reading piece and finding resources and things of that nature it was difficult it was difficult for me and um, I you know it's like I didn't know what to do with that and I struggled I I literally struggle so if anybody's out there that struggle like I did with the whole reading got to make sure you have your sources cited and things of that nature then you understand exactly where I'm coming from that's probably why I would never go for my doctorates I don't feel the need to go for a doctorate although they keep asking me to go for my doctorates and I'm just like I'm not doing that. who's doing that I don't feel like doing no more reading I don't want to do a dissertation thesis a, a plan. I don't want to do none of that. I'm tired. <laughs> and so, if I'm working on anything, I, it got to be something that I'm hearing. It got to be something I'm listening to, in a sense, because I'm like, I can't do it. And I just, you know, I don't know what else to say about that. But I think once you understand how you learn, you can get by with, you know, with anything. But that whole reading thing, don't nobody have time to read them user agreements because yeah, it's a privacy policy. <sighs> All of this, and then you're like, wait a minute, huh? Here's the cancellation policy, you know, as a user, and this is what our our portion is in this process as you agree to use our app or whatever the case may be, and it's something else. But I think people need to take the time, <clears throat> if they're not understanding something, especially legal documents, they need to t go to a lawyer, somebody who reads all the dog on time. Yeah. So they can give them full disclosure because what we don't even realize is a lot of stuff we don't even have full disclosure on, but we assume that everything that we need is already in that document and mm -hmm. it may not be. I love my attorney. I'll be like, <laughs> what them people say? Break it down with me. <laughs> <laughs> he do the Michael Jackson on documents for me. He break, uh -uh. He break it down. Yeah, break it down. Uh -huh. yeah. They done sent me 56 pages and they know I ain't finna read this. So before I sign, I need you to scan on through. Make sure I ain't going to need you in the near future to go after them. Right. So, you know, I don't know. It's just interesting how that kind of thing goes around. But you know what, though? Our literacy rates in the United States is less than a lot of other countries. Countries we wouldn't even think got high literacy rates. So that's part of the problem as well. And you know what? I just think that now... <clears throat> the way they do um, the curriculum for school, not saying they don't stress reading, but the way they even teaching how to read is just different. It's different than when we were coming up. Like, we actually have phonics. Like, they don't seem to be doing the phonics thing as much. It's like, oh, it's what they think that it is or whatever they think they sound it is. And I don't know, repetition for me worked. I don't understand why it's not working right That's now. That's why now <clears throat> is very, very, very important to be at the table with your kids. I agree. Because if you're not at the table with your children, I'm gonna give you a prime example. My daughter and my son was going to this school and <clears throat> they came home with their homework and I'm telling my daughter to do her homework and she broke down on me. <laughs> I'm like, girl, I know this teacher didn't send something home that she hasn't already taught. Right. You know what I mean? I've never seen this. She never did this. What pissed me off is that the paper didn't have no directions on it. Really? No. Y'all just shoveling loose leaf papers to these kids like, do this, do that. Uh -uh. You know, and so I said, did you ask your teacher for help? She never helped us. I said, what do you mean she never helped you? She said, if you ask her for help, she tell you to put your head down. No. Yes, look here. So I saw, I'm like, I, 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 I want to believe my baby. Okay. Right. <clears throat> but as a parent, I have to investigate. Right. So I did a sit-in. And you know, people get comfortable 
and they go back to their regular raggedy ways. Mm -hmm. So we sitting there, and I guess she had done forgot I was in the class. Uh huh. And a little girl raised her hand, me such and such. I don't know how to do this. I need help. You know what she told that little girl? Put her head down. Put your head down. I'll help you in a minute. Uh -uh. So I'm sitting there. She never helped her. Really? She ended up, she done passed that time. And now we on the carpet reading, the, it's story time now. So the little girl never got help. But now we on the carpet reading. Mm -hmm. It's another little girl. Got to use the bathroom. You could tell when the kid got to use the bathroom. They worse than us. They can't be still. Right. They like, oh. Right. Oh, my God. So she <laughs> like, I really got to go. She like, we're all going to go in a minute. Just wait. Oh, wow. And she ended up peeing on herself, didn't she? No, because I said, would you like me to take her? Because this baby is about to have an accident. Wow. Okay, everyone get up. <clears throat> Akita. I read that teacher her rights. Uh-uh. <laughs> I did. While them kids was using the bathroom, I read her her rights, and I took my kids out of that class, out of that school. I called my auntie, like, crying. I'm all emotional, like, they trying to make these kids stupid. You know, they not helping them. They teachers. You know, you a teacher. And if you not teaching them, hello? Who don't have me get on that? Please. How are they supposed to learn? I mean, I only have them a few hours at home. You have them eight hours. So within them eight hours, they ain't learn nothing. Nothing. But to put their head down. <laughs> <laughs> and then you send this little stupid kid home. About to get beat. You know. Cause you know how parents is, they ready to beat the brakes off you after so long. Like, all right, now you're not going to tell me you don't know none of this. Either you're not paying attention in class. Right. But they are. They just not getting the help. You know, it's funny you say that because <clears throat> I am struggling with this whole concept of how they're doing classes in the curriculum. And it's not the teachers. It's, to me, those that are governing over our education. So... Every time they have an opportunity, they always introduce these new programs, these new reading programs, new math programs, and they do it, seem like every year, if not every couple of years. But my thing is, how do I know that stuff is effective if you keep changing it? Now the teachers gotta now go and learn and get trained on how to present this information because somebody out there done created a book, but you want them to make the money. Don't get me started on that. You want them to make the money, so you buy the program and you don't even know if this, this is even effective. I said, are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah, because the same math we did, it's not, not doing. You right. You feel slow as a parent. Like, uh, the, mm, they like, mama, that's not how you do that. You like, yes, it is. That's how I they did. Like, that's how they taught us, you know, and I passed. Right. It's, it's so different. I remember when my kids were in school, they had what they call a parent university to help you help your children yeah. because the curriculum and how they present information to the children now are different. And I was like, I got bothered because I, I don't like it. I, I don't even like it right now. I said they done streamlined so many things in regards to the children that they, to me, I don't feel like that's their priority. It's always about the dollar. And as far as I'm concerned, it and is. anybody can sit there and be- Why do you think they give out pizza on count day? Why do you think they have pizza parties on count day? I know. They don't care about these children. They do not care. But they need that dollar. So on, on count day, I don't care if you come all week. See, when we was younger, they had truancy officers. Right. You know what I mean? And they still like, got them, but it's not, it's not yeah, as effective. It's not, it's, not, it's not effective. Your child commits 26 days in one semester. Don't tell me that because I'm doing the letters. I'm doing the letters. <laughs> where is little Johnny? Where is like, he? He ain't been here. But it's baffling to me. Like, it, does anybody care? And, and I guess it bothers me to the fact that I don't get why... I'm not saying parents aren't doing their jobs, but I'm not even saying teachers aren't doing their jobs. It's just this whole, it's systemic. And I don't care how you try to disguise it, it's systemic. And it's like, you're creating people to be dependent. And I say, how are these kids supposed to be self-sufficient 
if they're not able to do math, if they're not able to read, if they're not able to write. So that was the thing when we were growing up, reading, writing, and arithmetic. What are, what are these children getting? And I, and I, I, my heart hurts a lot because I see these kids and a lot of them are, you could tell they're frustrated. Some of them angry because they don't have the variety that was needed in order to make sure that they become well-rounded individuals. Now you got some kids, you know, and don't get me wrong, this is not in every school district or anything, but it's, it's bothersome that some districts have other classes more so than others. It's like home economics even though it's called life skills in some other schools. I know at my children's school, they had it in middle school. Home economics is not even presented in, in middle school anymore. Mm. Matter of fact, doggone um, skill trades. I remember they had mechanics. Mm -hmm. they, ha they had a few classes, um, um, uh, auto shop, and yep. they had uh, wood shop, wood shop classes when I was growing Listen. up. And it's like, they don't have that anymore. And it's like, oh my gosh. And don't get me wrong, there's some districts that actually have those classes, but it's not across the board. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they need to have these kids be more, like again, well-rounded students. Some of these kids can't, they don't even know how to put gas in a car. Are you kidding well, me? <laughs> in Detroit, um, in Detroit Public School, yeah, I'm throwing y'all out there. Throwing y'all under the bus. <laughs> Detroit Public School, um, you have like one counselor over so many alphabet. A through J. You know, Miss Didlake is everybody counselor this from A through J. You know, and then so on and so on. There's only two of them. You know. Right. Um, Rochester Hills High School. Mm-hmm. They have, um, they have a counselor for situations. Mm. Okay. That's different. Ain't it? So years ago, I used to remove asbestos. Okay. And we did Rochester Hills High School. Okay. And they had, they left just a bunch of stuff like laying around, which is terrible. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what is all these little books? Mm. The books were deep. The books were journals from children that were going through various things. Really? If you were a cutter, you went to this counselor. If you were manic depressive, you went through this counselor. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, was a victim of rape, you went through this counselor, mm -hmm. you know, and they journaled about it. Wow. And I was like, wow, when I was going to school, you know, it was like a cut and paste, you know, like. Right. Whatever you was going through, that one counselor had to talk to everybody about any and everything. It wasn't like, oh, you're going to go to Miss Keita because she deals with the cutters. Got you. And um, the stuff that I, speaking of reading, I just read a bunch of stuff and these kids are really crying out. I mean, like when I say crying out, anytime a child say, when I cut myself I go in the kitchen like I'm shopping at the mall and I look for the most abrasive knife that we have mm -mm. the one that's gonna make the most pain or release the most pain and I'm like what, what? yeah I would respond the same way like what's that about are you serious now, this parent probably don't even know what's going on. Because, you know, now they can treat your children without you knowing it. Which is a problem. And I got a problem with that, but go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> you got one girl that said, like, every guy that she messed with, she done carved their names in her legs. I'm not going to ask how many that was, but okay. Are you serious? Are you serious? Wow. Eating disorders. They school eating was, you talking about no outside food. They had Taco Bell, McDonald's, all these different restaurants inside, inside the, the school. school. Oh, wow. Inside the house. Like, like a college campus. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. But we got to eat meatloaf. No, -uh. remember Taco Burgers? Girl. <laughs> Girl, I was the fry kid. Just give me fries. <laughs> Like, I hope they got fries today because 
I am not eating nothing else. Just wait a minute. Oh, the pizza. The wait, pizza. right. Oh, that nasty square pizza. And you know what's bad? I hated the fact that I used to have to pay a uh, reduced lunch fee. Oh, you paid the dollar ten cent. Whatever the reduced. <laughs> no, it was like seventy some cents or whatever. I had to play a dollar ten. I'm like, give me some more fries. <laughs> Cause I'm wait not getting minute, nothing though. else. It was just always gotta argue with a lunch aid. Give me some more fries <laughs> and some more ranch, <laughs> ma'am. Stop being. You got a big pan of fries and you want to give oh me my five gosh. fries. But but what's bad is that you know they. My mom was a single mom and I had to pay reduced lunch fees. I was like, wait a minute, she making too much money? Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I was too much. Apparently, but. It's something, but see, that just is a testament to the level, the economic level, the social economics that are in different districts and how are, how they kind of deal with stuff. Now, check this out. There was a lady, and she's, um, a, a, I think I believe she's a nurse. So they had these meetings in Wayne County in regards to servicing children mm -hmm. and their different issues. Do you know there's issues like, they, they are so understaffed. She said out of all 50 states, I think only three states got are fully staffed. New York is one of them. I want to say she said New Hampshire. And I want to say she said Utah. Where is that? Girl, bye. So <laughs> you mean to tell me in order to service these kids today, we are so understaffed. Yeah. But what's but what's so tripped out? But wait a minute though. Side. But here's the thing: in generation wise, we talking years ago, we didn't have the level of problems, and I'm not gonna say the problems didn't exist, but the magnitude of it wasn't like it is today. But we have less children, because everybody's not having children at the same rate. That's why a lot of these buildings are empty. So it's like okay, we got less students. You got more kids that are that are special needs, so they have what they call a 504. Or an IEP, which means they need services in order to assist them in their education. One in sixty-six is uh, for autism. One in sixty-six. One out of every sixty-six children, you have an autistic kid. Back when we were growing up, it was one in five hundred. Why is that? Well, let's talk about it. When you talk about going that direction, now we're talking about foods. We're talking about the things that we're eating now. We're talking about the environment as a whole. We're talking about a lot of the things that is being sprayed on everything. Like even looking at a glossy apple. Why is it so glossy? It ain't even supposed to look like that. Girl, they're I putting to... stuff on everything. And it's like they're, it's like, like a guy was saying, <coughs> if you, if, if I can't make you sick, then what you need a doctor for Mm -hmm. If I can't put rules in place for you to commit a crime, not saying you should anyway, what you need a lawyer for? You know what I'm saying? So you got all of these different scenarios that kind of guide you in a sense to, oh, now I'm sick. Mm -hmm. And it's like, are you, it's on purpose. It is deliberate and it's on purpose. Like, let me give you a prime example. I go see the rheumatologist. Um, and when I first saw him, mm -hmm. again, when I was telling you, looks can be deceiving. Uh -huh. When I first saw him, because I wasn't all bent over and dragging my leg, and, you know, because I wasn't all messed up, he felt like I didn't have lupus. Well, my lupus just wasn't flared. Right. Okay. But if he'd have seen me, a month before I saw him, he the seen I was in the hospital and couldn't walk. Right. Okay. So I go see him and he's like, oh, I don't feel comfortable giving you a treatment plan because I don't feel like you have lupus. I feel like your levels are high in lupus, but it could be something else. And, you know, all this just beating around the bush. Right. So I left him and got worse to the point where. Every time I breathed in, I was like screaming. Wow. Because I had developed mm. so much um, inflammation around my lungs that it hurted to breathe. Wow. So I get rushed to the hospital and the doctor is like, why are you not on a treatment plan? So they end up having to give me a thousand milligrams a day of 
um, um, steroids mm -hmm. to reduce the inflammation. inflammation, okay? Because this idiot didn't give me a treatment plan because I didn't look sick. But you know, I don't know if you know, but you know they treat black women differently in the medical world because they think we're not in pain. They won't give us the things that we need because they feel like we don't need it or we can endure whatever is going on with us to an extreme rate without having any type of medication or anything. So they'll allow stuff to go on for that reason. This is the reason why, I hate to say it, that a lot of the black women that are giving birth are dying. Some of them would die. So I mean, and I don't have the st statistics in front of me, but I do know that those things occur because it's always been this thing against black women in regards to pain, and not not just black men, black men as well. She's but strong. but you know what? Hogwash. Just because I don't give a dog on how you how you present me as being a strong person, don't assume that I don't I'm not in pain and don't need anything. If I'm in pain and I'm telling you I'm in pain, I need you to believe that. And there's a there's this thing, and they they are taught this in the dog on um, medical yeah, industry. My doctor, my doctor, the first thing he says, how you feel. Not not the rheumatologist, my doctor. And I'm like, I'm okay. And that's what they're supposed to do. And he's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. He said, this blood work don't say you okay. He said, Arendi, you are a very sick woman. Wow. And I'm like, what you talking about with this? <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 I'm good. Well, because... I do so much outside of what they tell me to do mm -hmm. to keep myself healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't go in and be like, yeah, I'm taking this ginger and, you know, I'm doing this and doing that. I put olive oil on every day, you know, for my skin because they like, where your rash is at? Right. You're supposed to have a, a, a rash this summer. Mm. No. No, I'm not. Cause my skin got olive oil on it, and it's a protectant for my skin. Right. I'm not gonna wait until I start, you know, skin start falling off and want y'all to <laughs> give me something. Cause a lot of people do. They just depend on the doctor to, you know, make them do everything, and and you have to be your own advocate. Well, here's the problem: if you don't realize that doctors practice then you'll always be dependent upon somebody who's practicing on you. Because when you tell them your symptoms, they're going to whatever book or they're plugging Wait, it into whatever computer. Says, We're going to try this. Yeah, exactly. First. And so not, so you become the guinea pig. Yeah, we're going to try this But here's this the first. thing. If you listen to your body, because your body loves you, and I don't even think people realize your body mm -hmm. is fighting for you every day. Mm -hmm. The things we put in it keeps it from fighting the way we need it. But it's fighting for you every day to help you live. But yeah, if you're not you listening to water, right? Yeah, you it, it lets you know when you get headaches. It lets you know certain things. So if you're not listening to that voice in your body, because everything you need to know is already within you, then you will depend on somebody else to tell you something you should already know. I know we went from reading to, you know, <laughs> other stuff. Other stuff. <laughs> and that's and just how it happens on this show. I know, right? That's but it, but it was happens. a segue because, of course, we talk about the children and it's just like with the yeah. whole reading. And that, I mean, it's yeah. it's all relevant. Yeah, it's all relevant. But, you know, I I don't know. It's, it's just a, it's a lot to dissect. And when yeah. you talk about these things, it goes into uh, a myriad of subjects, matters that, you know, we, you know, may not talk about next time. So and it's OK. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Because, you know, we going on 40 minutes here. So, and, you know, we don't, we try to go too long because we, we know we, we knew. And it's just us two. Now, I just think if we had somebody else on this show, which will be happening. Not sure when, but it'll be happening. Mm -hmm. um, but when it does happen, it will probably be about an hour show. So, you could tell me and Rindy, we, we, we talks. We talk before the show, we'll talk during the show, and we'll talk after the show. Because there's always some other stuff that needs to be talked about. Exactly. And that's the whole problem. A lot of stuff is not talked about. People don't have comfortable spaces to talk about stuff. 
They just don't. They don't have a comfortable space at home. You don't have a comfortable space at school. Right. You don't have a comfortable space at work. You know what I'm saying? You don't have a comfortable space anywhere. Really? Yeah. You know? You think you could talk to somebody and then it's like, somebody else like, yeah, they said, you said that they said it. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, that's supposed to be confidential, you know? You know what? <clears throat> but it wasn't. So, yeah. Yeah, so... For a recap, we understand that, you know, reading is fundamental. <laughs> and it is. So, and reading is the basis of really kind of making sure we understand how to communicate. And you and can really, protect yourself. Yes, you you got to protect yourself. So, people, and I'm talking to myself at the same time, we all need to be better at making sure we understand everything that we're signing, everything that is in front of us. And, you know, making sure that the communication is clear and we have full disclosure of all contracts. That's including those that you make verbally with people to include that. With that being said, um, I want to say that at some point, again, we, we are going to go live. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but I'm telling you, it's been a fight. And, I, and, and obviously it's been a fight because we're supposed to go live. So I always consider adversity a means of getting to that end. And you always gonna we're always gonna face some form of adversity when we're changing up a way we do things and it's a it's for growing. And that's what we're doing. We're growing. So I appreciate all of you listeners, my day ones, you know, those that are really taking the time to ask me about our link. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the best at marketing. I really need a virtual assistant, but I'm gonna leave that there. Shut sh- shut your mouth, Randy. I, you shouldn't look like that. Stop rolling your eyes. <laughs> so anyway, um, with that being stated, if you have anything that you would like to hear us talk about, like in regards to landlord, tenant, or even other stuff, you can text or call at 947-234-4633. Again, 947-234-4633. And we appreciate any uh, feedback that you can provide us. With that being stated... This is the Landlord Tennis Show and other stuff with Miss Arindi and Miss Keita. We're going to leave you be, and you guys have a great and amazing and awesome night. Take care. Bye.